So S Club Junior is then finished. What am I going to do now? Because you hear about these like child right, performers yeah. have led like a really weird life. So I would like hand out leaflets outside of Tesco and feeling really embarrassed like because it wasn't glamorous. Now I'm being that person that's handing leaflets and no one wants to take one from. And we were earning good money, but like we could all buy ourselves nice cars, like we helped our parents. Right. Like, and then it all ended. Yeah. And so does the money. My mum, she was m more than having two parents and then some. However, with my dad, your DNA is your DNA. And I think I was always curious. And watching Marvin parent, this is yeah. how it should look. But I had a negative feeling towards him for so many years. I don't think I'll ever be able to relate to you. And thank you so much for joining no, me. No, thank you. And I'm loving this sofa. Are you? Yeah. Well, thanks. This is only our like second time recording with this one. I'm the second bum on this sofa. It makes me feel very like. Instagram. Yeah. You know, I have one like this in my office and I love it. Yeah. Because it's what I would want it, my sofa to stay like at home and it would never happen because yeah. I've got three kids, right? And I'm just messy. So this, you, I feel like I can keep it pristine if it's in my office. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, although I'll probably still end up messing it up anyway because that's just <laughs> what I do. Um, I want to go back to like the very, very beginning so we can have a proper yeah. view of your whole career, what happened at each point, how you kind of, I mean, hindsight's very helpful. I it's find always... particularly when like looking at your career and you're like, Christ, what was I thinking then? <laughs> Shoulda, like... woulda, coulda. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so let's go back to the very beginning and your childhood. Could yeah. you just tell me a little bit about what your childhood was like? So my childhood, I loved my childhood actually. I really, I was thinking about this the other day. It was just really simple, mm. humble beginnings. Um, my mum raised me on her own. She was a single parent. Um, she had me when she was pregnant with me. I was in a hostel for a bit with her. Um, and then I remember we then got a flat, which I loved. It's funny, isn't it? When you look back, I think, actually, my mum was really sort of, you know, in a situation that she really wouldn't have wanted mm. to be in. But all I remember is like, I'm like, we were in a hostel. Yeah. Well, like, when I'm thinking about this now, if if I if the shoe was on the other foot, knowing how she would feel as a parent and an adult, yeah, it it's crazy. But I just look back at that so fondly, um, and I knew I knew we didn't have a lot. But I was so rich in other ways. You know, mm -hmm. my mum was like a powerhouse, it still is. And yeah, I kind of remember we had some lovely neighbours. Like I remember all of the yeah. things that actually stuck out to me. Um, and then I remember it being a massive deal when my mum managed to, we moved from a council flat into a council house. And then she like worked her ass off and bought the house from the council. Oh, and yeah. I remember it being like such a big milestone not understanding it yeah I didn't if you lived in a house you lived in a house I didn't really know if it was somebody's rented council. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how yeah. it looked right you don't as a child but I remember like it being like a real milestone and such a celebration and then yeah we just had like a really busy house for I was always just dancing and you know that was my thing. I'd be singing, over, you know, Monday to Friday, obviously at school. And then on the weekends, it would just be like singing and dance and drama. And then what I'd learned at my little local dance school, my mum would have to like buy fake tickets to <laughs> like, buy one of my tickets um, in the evenings. And yeah, I just remember having a really nice childhood. I loved my school. And yeah, when I look back, I don't look back that you know, in a way that I think I went without. Yeah. Because I think there was so much love and yes, mm. there were situations that, you know, if I could have changed, I probably would have done. Mm. Um, Like as an adult, maybe in yeah. hindsight for me, but actually I felt like I had a great childhood. And I think all of that experience of, as you know, of us together, my mum and I just made us so, like we've got a bond that could never be broken. Yeah. She's literally my best friend. I mean, she's starting to call me way too much at the minute. I told her, like, we need to get some boundaries in here. Um, in, like, a nice way. Yeah, yeah. But she'll recall me and she is 
forgetting like you know I know I know that or it will be like she's retired now yeah so it's like she'll ring me and be like you remember so and so well I was with them today we're having a coffee and and I'm like, Mama, no, I don't know who they are. You do remember them, you know, when they do that thing to yeah, you. Yeah, like, yeah. Nah, still don't yeah. remember them. <laughs> no but, idea. Uh, oh, listen about. anyway. Um, so yeah, it's we have literally the best relationship in the world, and I think it's probably because of all our journey together and what yeah. we went through, and we were a team, you know, with my sister at home, and that was us, and that was how it looked, and she worked literally every job under the sun. Mm. Um to make us happy and we and we always were is yeah. the truth yeah and i think it goes to show as well like how much love impacts like how what you feel like yeah. you have as a child i mean i grew up in a very privileged environment and i obviously i think ever no one can properly relate to each other you know without having literally been through well, the you same you only know what cards you're right, dealt exactly don't you? but i think that the presence of like love and showing that like as a child you know we think of like I don't know, buying children some like Adidas trainers or whatever, like yeah, they don't give a fuck. Like they kind of just care. want like, you know, like yeah. the love and all of that. And I think that has like, when you talk about it in that way, it kind of shows so clearly. What do you, I know you spoke- Well, a house a is a house, isn't yeah. it? A bed's a bed. You're yeah, only, right. you don't, you're sort of, you've had your dinner. Yeah. One might have had caviar and the other one's had chicken nuggets <laughs> and chips. Like it's not, and as a kid, what do you want? Right, sure. You know, so I think it's just, it is really stripping it back to those simple things. I think that's one thing I always take from that when raising my own kids is that like I've got friends that really had like privileged starts in life had a Range Rover as their first car mm. and you know or however that might look for them which you know I don't judge them for but when we share our stories they're like oh my gosh like I wish that my parents were around they were always away or I spent a lot of the time with a nanny and yeah it's it's funny what you think you're delivering, but ultimately everyone just wants time, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, no, of course. And you've spoken a lot about like the impact of growing up in a single parent mm-hmm. household. What what effect do you feel like that had on you in terms of your kind of, you know, the next steps in as you were becoming like a young adult? Yeah, I think it's always that missing piece of the puzzle. Mm-hmm, I think that's sure. what it is. I think as much as I was all like, you know, she was more than having two parents and then some however you know your DNA is your DNA and I think I was always curious Mm -hmm. and I think my mum did a really good job in almost protecting my dad so I didn't really form any opinion on my dad based on my Mm mum so I just kind of just I knew he went present right because you know kids know who's in their life and who isn't yeah but it was never like, your dad is this, your dad is that. And, all, and then when I was older, I sort of had my, I could form my own opinion, which yeah. I think is so important in, you know, I've got friends and family members that are co-parenting and I, and I get how challenging it can be because I was a product mm. of that. Mm. Um, but I think the most important thing is to not, you know, you've got kids together, so you are going to be in each other's life forever, however that looks. Mm. And at what capacity that is, is, you know, is relative. But I think you just have to be able to form your own opinion because guess what? No matter how much, if my mum was to slag my dad off all day, Mm. every day, I'm still going to want to know him because Mm -hmm. he's a part of me and I'm still going to be curious to tap into that side Mm. of my life. And whether I'd then actually, God, mum, how did you deal with him? You know, whether that's my opinion it, that's mine to have, isn't it? Yeah. And not to sort of use your child as a weapon. So I think that's really important. Yeah, no, I can completely understand that. And if you don't mind me asking, did you have a relationship with your dad from So there? they split, I think when I was like less than one. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't have a relationship for a period of time. I did. It was like very sporadic. Mm-hmm. And it would be like, okay, I'm back around again. I want to see her now. And then... I would see him for like odd weekends and then it would be, then you didn't hear from him again. Mm. And that was sort of, it was a little bit like that until there was literally nothing. And then when I reached, I want to say about 12, 13, Mm -hmm. I saw him, I remember seeing him once. Then I didn't see him again at all after that. Mm. And then probably at about 17, I had the curious thing. I remember I did not long pass my driving test and I'd heard that I that I knew I had other siblings. I always knew I had a brother, but I didn't know mm. about the two sisters. But obviously they were a lot younger because I'm the eldest. Um, so it was dealing, it was seeing them via him. 
Right. And did they have an active relationship with him? Um, they did at that time, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he sort of, you know, to what capacity that, you know, that's their story. But he was, a, yeah, he was a, around for them way more present than he was mm. for me. So it was hard to sort of have, navigate a relationship with them until they were adult, if that yeah. makes sense. Um, so yeah, that was my thing. And it's, it's, it's weird. And then sort of fast forward to years later, we then got reintroduced as yeah. adults. Yeah. And like, it's like they've now never not been in my life, which really? is crazy. And yeah. so you have a good relationship now? With, with not, not, not with my dad. Right. No, but with, um, we still haven't spoke, which is crazy really? in, the, in all of that time. Yeah. Um, but I do have a, like, it's weird. It's like, how did we ever not know each other? We went mm. for one meal and um, Marvin came with me because basically long story short, I've jumped ahead quite a bit. We, I went to a Christmas party, like a work Christmas mm. party. And um, I basically, I was at, had a couple of margaritas, you know, yeah. it's Christmas. Having a good time. <laughs> Literally having a lovely time. And um, it's so random, but Kem from Love Island right. was on my former agent's like roster. Right. He was there and ran, and he was relatively new off of Love Island at this point. And I was like, welcome to the team, et cetera, et cetera. Chatting and he was like, I've got to tell you something because I always said, if I saw you, I would mention it. And I'm like, right. And I could, I instantly knew it yeah, was you know it's gonna weird, be deep, but like, I didn't know what it was. Yeah. And um, he was like, I went to school with Lily, your sibling. And like, we were like really like best friends. And I always said, if ever I, you know, if ever anything happens and when I went on Love Island, I'd spoke to her and I'd said, if ever I see her, I'll, you know, I'll mention that I know you and you need to get in contact with each other. I'm like, this is really weird. Okay. And then he was like, should I give you her number? Can I send you her number? And obviously I'm like tipsy. Yeah, you're, so you're this out. Is this is not the environment that you're expecting it to be. Oh, we've turned into like this really long lost family at the yeah. Christmas party. So I said, yeah, okay, give her my number. I had hers. And then she had messaged me and it was, and Marv was like, look, reply in the morning. Because yeah. this is yeah, all a bit yeah. like, this has just happened and <laughs> yeah. you've had a drink. Yeah, and, yeah, you yeah know. sure. So I did. I, yeah, I was really <laughs> pleased he was there because I would have just been like, hi, yeah. on a voice note. It's, yeah, yeah. it's not the thing to do. Um, so yeah, re replied in the morning. The next night we, we all met for dinner. Wow, quick. Marvin came with me because I was like, they all have grown up with each other. Yeah. They're like, yeah, they you know need someone each on other. your like, side. I, like, I feel like <laughs> I'm walking, it was like a date. Yeah, it's yeah, mad. Yeah. Um, it was like being on a date, but then we're having, they're friends with them. And yeah, you'd be yeah, like, yeah. well, I feel really awkward entering yeah, this yeah. group. And he came with me and he was just like, on the way back in the car, he was like, I just couldn't stop looking at you all. And how, like, we're all twins, basically. It's yeah. crazy. Like, my dad's genes are very strong. Um, we look more like full siblings than my husband and his siblings right, do yeah, have the same yeah. parents. It's like his genes are so strong. Um, so yeah, we spoke and it's weird that like nature over nurture thing because yeah. our mannerisms were the same. Our like, it's wild, like wild. If you saw us all together, you wouldn't know that we've only been in each other's life for like six and a bit years. Yeah. Like it's nuts. Um, so then that was it. We met, we then had a group chat We then, and then I've spoke to them every single day since. That's amazing. And before that point, because it sounds like when Kem had said, do you want her number? It sounds like they would have had conversations before, yeah. essentially being like, I, you know, I would love to have her in my yeah. life or whatever it might be. I can imagine also, and this is me completely projecting, mm -hmm. I obviously don't know your family and I obviously don't know your full mm -hmm. situation, but also I can imagine because you were in the public eye, it was probably, yeah. I can imagine that if I had like a sibling that was in the public eye and I wanted to be like reunited with them, I'd be worried that they were going to think I was just reaching out because, yeah, you know, that's you have what money or because you're yeah. in like a position or whatever. So it sounds like there was like, they really wanted to be, yeah you know, to know you well. I think so. And I think we were both sort of, we hadn't reached out to each other in fear of rejection. Of course. Like my fear of rejection was 
because I, in my mind, mm. I've built up that they have a fantastic relationship with my dad. Right. And I'm never going to have that yeah. because I don't respect him in that way. Mm. But I also don't want to project my feelings course, onto them yeah. if they have had a good upbringing with him. Yeah. So I don't know their story. So I sort of had the fear of rejection from that angle that mm. they'd be like, you know, I don't, we don't want a relationship with you because, you know, our dad's our dad and yeah. we can't muddy the water here. Of course. I thought that would be their response. And I think for weirdly a similar reason, they thought because I didn't have a great relationship that I wouldn't want to know them. Like them. Yeah, and yeah. then also because of the public eye thing, you're right. So I think we're both sort of doing that, like we yeah. both had the fear of rejection yeah. and we all kind of didn't need to. Yeah, I mean, that's such a beautiful story. Um, and obviously so lovely to hear that you have such yeah. a good relationship. It's beautiful now. Yeah. Like there was a really, there was a period of time that it was, I probably thought that it was unfair that my dad was raising oh, them and why wasn't he interested yeah. in me? And But like, I think with these things, like I said, it when everybody becomes adult, which is why I always, I'm not co-parenting, but I'm, someone that's like I said a product of that environment it's just you know you have to let people learn a situation themselves right and, and like not project your own onto yeah of onto course them. and that fear of rejection that you talk about having kind of come into your life from quite an early age mm. because of your familial situation did you find that kind of manifested itself elsewhere in your life in terms of kind of I don't know maybe schooling or yeah imposter syndrome like any of these things or kind of relationships yeah I think I don't think so you know mm. I really don't because I kind of never had it mm. so I didn't have I was always really like aware of when I met somebody not to have like stereotypical daddy issues and right. I really didn't want that to affect my respect for a partner because yes, I saw my mum smash it by herself right like I didn't want to be like I know that I don't need a man mm -hmm. I don't I don't yeah. I know that I've, I could have this by myself because I see my mum do it and I have the same ethic she does but like I didn't want to I didn't want that to be too strong like of I've course. got this you're just here for like you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and I wanted to make but I think that's also meeting the right person isn't yeah. it I think oh, and like having like, you know, you see, you hear a lot of it now that like, we all want that soft girl energy. Yeah. We don't want to walk into that room and be. And I was always quite, I think I was conscious of that before knowing that was a thing. Yeah, right. Like, cause you'd, you'd grown up in the situation where you knew what it was like not to have that. Mm -hmm. And therefore it was always an option. Like as in, it, it, yeah. I'm not sure that comes across in the right way, but it was always kind of, it was always going to be a fine outcome, even if that's the case. Yeah. So almost rather than creating a fear of rejection, creating like a, well, if that's the worst that can happen, then it's I, you know, like I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. I've done that. Like and I kind weirdly, of know that. that's the way it manifested itself mm. in me, which obviously I'm thankful for, but mm. it was almost like, well, I can do it anyway. Yeah. So why not? Yeah. And that was always my, that's always been my like, you know, sort of mantra throughout life. Like, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. And yeah. that's sort of my approach to everything. Um, but yeah, I think it really did sort of, I know I don't need, but do I want? Yes. Yeah. And yeah, it was kind yeah. of that really. Yeah, no, mm. I think that's, I think that's really amazing and like shows a huge amount of resilience to be able to kind of, I think there can completely understandably be a lot of fear of rejection from that point. Yeah. And we're all taught like, love and belonging and all of this from our early life like no matter what whether it's a single parent whether, mm. whether it's a, a double it parent looks. in a terrible relationship whether it's like too much love mm. quote unquote like yeah. whatever like that's how we're taught the way that we relate yeah. to other people and the way yeah. that we kind of build relationships so it's so in I find that so interesting yeah. always like seeing how people's relationships but I think don't get me wrong there were times as a kid where it did upset me mm. that I'd be like but I don't understand why. And right. I think that's what, and that's where my mum, I see through my adult eyes is how she was sort of protecting everybody in the situation because she would be like, well, you know, some some guys just aren't, you know, you know, when your mum, you carry a baby and you're, it's natural instinct and some men, do, she was very sort of protective. So I was like, oh, okay. So yeah. I tried to understand it out that way. And I think there were times that I just didn't understand like, 
but why doesn't, especially when I knew then he had other children, I was I like, I can imagine that's really huh? heartbreaking. So yeah. why doesn't he want to, like, what did I do? And there was a lot of that. And I think there always would have been until I sort of met him later on. Mm. But for me, actually, I, the sort of tipping point for me was having my own children. Mm -hmm. Because I'd sort of had this, like, it wasn't, it wasn't like a, I was happy in my environment. I was always curious, but I had a negative feeling towards him for so many years mm. because of that, like, well, I'm a kid. Like right. your job is to be a parent. Like I yeah. don't understand how you're not interested. In me. And I felt it was always quite uh, from an angsty place, which I suppose is understandable. But the, 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 the time the dial turned is when I had my own children. Yeah. Because I kind of thought, it went, it turned into a respect thing rather yeah. than a, why not me? Why didn't you, how dare you? It, that all went mm -hmm. and it was more of a, I couldn't relate to you. I can't relate yeah. because this baby and watching Marvin parent and the way that he is with our children and the way that he would put them and us before everything and even if we weren't together the love he has for his children right. and like the not wanting to miss every breath and the I was like wow and I just would be in awe of watching him as a dad and actually I'm like this is what he should feel mm. like this isn't like I kind of want to give him this medal and this crown and yeah. be like you're amazing because I didn't have that but actually we need to stop clapping that so much because yeah. this is actually what is is this is yeah. how it should look so for me that's when I was like actually I'm at peace of all of this now because it's more of a respect thing. And right. I don't think I'll ever be able to relate to you mm. and respect you as a human because we're never going to have that in common. And I also feel like it's flipping on the rather than, and this, like, I think rather than you having been not accepted in that environment, mm. it's almost like at that point that you had kids, you're kind of flipping that in a way because it's like, actually do you know what like these are my boundaries and this is what yeah. I want from the people I ha hang out with yeah. or have a relationship with and I've decided that's not yeah. right and I feel like that's quite powerful yeah. as well because in any environment where anyone feels rejected in a way there's mm. such a tendency to kind of like yearn for that acceptance yeah. yeah and actually for you to just be like do you know what I we clearly believe different things and that's I, that's, that's exactly it right there like I'm like I'm never on a, now, obviously, when you're young, you don't understand, and mm. uh, you know, in the same way that you do when you can look back at a situation. But now I am a parent, and nothing's different now. Yeah. Now we're on a level playing field. You know, I could have been told, you don't know what it's like to be a parent. You don't know how yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, make. sure. So for me, I'm like, we believe in different things. Right. We have different priorities. Yeah. If I was to meet you as a human that I didn't know and I wasn't attached to biologically, I'd be like, oh, they're not my you know right. sure you do your thing like no judgment but we're not the same people so mm. we probably wouldn't hang right yeah so I think and it's that's what it did for me and I didn't hate him yeah I, that all it's went just I was just like yeah yeah I think and also then you go into protector mode and my you know whatever my job title whatever my success my biggest you know role in life is to protect my kids yeah and I wouldn't want somebody to enter their life that was gonna be inconsistent yeah because you know, I feel like children need consistency. Yeah. So for me, that's a boundary too, yeah. you know? No, so yeah. Mm. I think that's really, really powerful. And I've had a lot of friends who've kind of gone through situations mm. where they've got to a point recently, not as parents, but as adults, where they've just been like, do you know what, when I really think about it, the only reason I kind of want you in my life, and obviously we all want relationships mm. to work and like familial, whatever, whatever it might be, but kind of got to a point as an adult being like, we clearly are so mismatched. Yeah. Like the only reason I want you in my life is because you are my family. But realistically, like, is that the only reason because I've been, you know, almost rejected from yeah. this that I want it and actually kind of being like, do you know what? I and I don't. think we, there's something in there that it's family, right? Yeah, so you're, you're yearning for that idyllic picture. Mm. And I think when you can come to peace with the fact that there is no idyllic picture really, mm. however that looks, whoever's had a perfect family, there'll always be something mm. somewhere. And I think the quicker you get to that place where, because I think you, as, as humans, we put pressure on it, things having to work because mm. that person's family. Yeah. And they could treat you so appallingly, but their family, so 
we'll all to we'll tolerate it because we have to or be mm. I think when you can get to that place where you're at peace yeah with the fact that you can't change it mm. I think you will instantly le lead a better life for sure yeah no I think that's really powerful I want to talk about your early career mm. um before we come on to speaking about kind of your work now um and more recently how did you originally get into kind of music? I know that you were saying you were originally like dancing around and selling yeah. annoying, tickets to annoying your shows. anyone. Right. Doing I feel it like in front all that any listen. like quote unquote like performing arts like children are the most <laughs> they are most so annoying of all the like, children. Oh, <laughs> shut up! <laughs> so how did that like start? Um, I used to go to like a performing arts weekend school. So yeah. we, I'd go all day Sunday, and then I would like I'd just like potter around there on a Saturday just because yeah. I wanted to be I love to like be in it um at, like to the point where I would like say to my mum so and so's invited me to their party can you say that I'm grounded she'd be like what <laughs> you're not grounded I'm, I know but I, I don't want to say that I can't go or I don't want to but you know that's the only way to yeah yeah because I was sort of embarrassed to admit how much I loved it and yeah. that was like so yeah I would be that I'd go into and I was only like 12 at the time and I would go in on a Saturday and like help assist the teachers in like the three-year-old's ballet class, just because I just loved being around that environment. It's a weird thing. I sort of, it was a buzz. As soon as mm. Friday was here, I was like, right, can I go? Yeah. And I'd just turn up and be like, can I help in any way? <laughs> um, and I think it was really good for me because it gave me a real, my sort of passion was born, but it also, gave me a real focus mm -hmm. like you know I remember my friends would be like we're gonna go and hang outside Tesco tonight do you want to and I'd be like um I'm grounded they must have thought she's her mum is so strict yeah <laughs> she's always grounded so I kind of that was that I'd go there that would be my weekend and then this audition come up on remember CBBC mm -hmm. and I used to watch it religiously after school and at the time the audition was to support S Club 7 it like for you to go and sing and like support them at a Wembley arena show. And I was like, it sounds like the job for me. Let me get I love the sounds like I found a girl. <laughs> I know, I'm like so You're obnoxious. Like, yeah. Yeah. Wembley's been waiting for I me. mean, Wembley's cold. <laughs> I think they're talking to me on that. <laughs> like, who do you think you are, hon? You're 12. Relax. I love children's confidence. I, I actually love We need to bottle confidence. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I thought, do you know what? The arena's calling, <laughs> mum, get me there now. So, it's so funny. So I literally begged my mum to yeah. take me for this audition. And there was a couple of kids that were Frankie, who I was then in juniors and the Saturdays with being one of them, that we were at the same dance club. So there was a few of us that went. Um, and it wasn't like out of the ordinary, right? We would audition for things before. I was in like a theatre show beforehand. Yeah. And so we went and it was like, I'm talking the days where, you know where they used to film for like, pop stars or pop idol and yeah. it would be like before the x factors and the cues would be like for yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like round round yeah, blocks yeah. for you know miles and miles long so my mum my poor mum when I think about it they're all just there thinking oh my gosh we're, we're here all day like we yeah. arrived first thing in the morning and we what a good mum got yeah my parents would be like yeah absolutely and also my <laughs> sister at the time like because my mum like there was no like child care or that being yeah. an option so my sister would like that had to sit there with me, like, great, this is fun. And like running around. And she was like, <laughs> when I think about it now, it's literally like the worst day out as a parent. Like, yeah. let's take a load of kids to Wembley and queue all day. Like, no. Um, so then there was a couple audition phases and, you know, and then I think my mum then was a bit excited too. She yeah. was like, this is like, well, you're obviously quite good at this. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Not really. She's just having to deal with my tickets at, you know, yeah, in, the, yeah. in the living room. So then we then went for this final audition and S Club 7 were at this one and going through rounds of, but at this point we still think it's just like one person gets to perform. And then Simon Fuller turns up, who I didn't know who on earth that was, but all the adults were like, he's a big music manager. And they gave us um, like a, a talk and they said, you know, we actually, there's been something that we haven't actually told you. We're putting together a junior version of S Club 7. And I was like, and they said, you are our final. There was like nine of us at the time. So they were like, you're our final nine. And I was like, 
my mum was over and I remember looking at my my mum and I said to her, and she reminds me of this all the time. And I actually remember saying it too. And I must have been like 11. Yeah. And I was like, if you don't let me do this, I'll never talk to you again. <laughs> <laughs> nice bit of blackmail. Yeah, good yeah. She yeah, was yeah. like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and my mum was like, at the time was like, she owned a hairdressing salon. She was right. a hair, like, this was so far away from like yeah, yeah, our yeah. world. Um, and then, yeah, then we are a group. We did support them at Wembley. So that bit was so true. So there were nine of you. There were nine of us. Then it went down for one reason or another. It went down to eight of us. And then, yeah, it was like the most exciting thing. We had like so many fun memories. We were really, we were actually really well protected because you hear about these like child right, performer yeah. star situation that they can have led like a really weird life. But for us, it was, we were, we had, like chaperones were amazing. Our parents were really quite involved, which when like the businesswoman in me now, when I look back and I think, oh my God, how the management team had to deal with eight sets of parents. Oh my God, yeah, the I cannot imagine. The ki- like it's literally like, it, I don't think it would be worth the financial gain yeah. for me. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the thought of it sounds so stressful. Um, but yeah, we, I just had the best time ever and that sort of planted the seed of mm-hmm. this is what I want to do. I want to, I don't know what capacity, but I want to be in this world forever. Right, sure. And then, you know, juniors can't last forever. Of we course. all grew, we got boobs, we got yeah. butts, you know, it gets to that bit yeah, where I like, to sort of rein it in. So I think I was <laughs> like, this is not working. Yes, yeah, this isn't working out, is it? 14, 15, and that got knocked on the head. And then my mum was like, and we were earning good money. We must flag, like, for of someone of that age, let alone like what my mum was like, yeah. wow. Like, have you ever talked about like what type of money you, you uh, made? No, I haven't. And I couldn't, I can't remember entirely, but like we could all buy ourselves nice cars. Like we helped our parents. Right, like proper like, money. When it came, yeah, we earned money. Yeah. Um, Which is actually hilarious because when I joined the Saturdays, I was like, can't wait for all of this. And the music industry changed some and the money was right. better when I was a junior. Wild. Right. Yeah. Um, So I... Yeah, I remember my mum being like, okay. Like I, like, I was paying the high tax bracket at a, right. for a child. You know, when you think about that, it's crazy. Yeah, that's insane. Um, and then it all ended. Yeah. And so does the money. And did it end, like, did they gather you all together? Did you know it was going to come to an end? No. Out of nowhere? No. So that's the only thing when I look back, I'm like, yeah, that probably wasn't handled the best. Mm. It was like... I remember us getting a message. I think our mum maybe got a phone call about, but it wasn't like it was the it was the end. But it sort of led us to believe it kind of right. wasn't. Yeah, sure. Um, and then my mum was like, "Well then, you need to get a job." Mm-hmm. I was like, and you were like, no. "Sorry, say so what?" Now? I'm driving an Audi, and I'm, I'm twelve. Like, well, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm twelve. <laughs> I've got a Mercedes outside. Um, yeah, my mum was like, "You need to get a job." And I did, you know, this it's easy come, easy go, isn't it? When you yeah. think nothing's going to run out. And mm. my mum my wasn't used to dealing with money. Mm. So she wasn't probably the best person to financially advise me. And I would just like go out and be like, I'm going to buy my friends some trainers. And right. I get like, that yeah, was yeah. sort of where my money went. There was nothing else to spend it on. Um, so then I got a job, a local radio station. I was like a promo girl. And like, because there wasn't like, where do you get a job at? A young age how does mm-hmm. that look so I would like hand out leaflets outside of Tesco and people would be like aren't you the girl from <laughs> like, and I'd is... be like yeah <laughs> things have changed things have changed there's no work anymore guys but it was the best moment of character building yeah because like, you know nothing lasts forever mm. so you've just got to be thankful and smart whilst you've got it I can imagine that was a very important early lesson because it there, was. that would have like I'm sure in your mind you could have thought this could also be it forever like I could now be in like a different and I was type embarrassed. of job but yeah I was embarrassed I like you know I had it would have been the coolest thing in the world yeah. like you being the friend that was doing that yeah and for me like I remember having to go back and sit my GCSEs in a school where I hadn't been because we were then homeschooled um and feeling really embarrassed like to the you know because it wasn't glamorous anymore mm. it was it's done and now I'm handing leaf being that person that's handing leaflets and no one wants to take one from so I remember being like but actually it gave me the 
like you say, it taught me the best lesson and gave me that drive to be. So then I would do the promotions job of a weekend in the week whenever they would call me. Um, then I passed my test, my driving test. So like a few years later, I was still doing that, mm. but doing auditions at the same time, like simultaneously. So like I would literally earn money to go get on the train and right. do go for a casting or go for, so that's sort of how that works. So S Club Juniors then finished and then it was like, whoa, what am I gonna do now? But I wasn't like worried. I was really like, huh, this isn't life as you know it. And you go from having every second of your hour planned to like, oh, well that's it then, what, what do we do? And then I went on a couple of castings. I got um, a gig hosting a program called Smile for CBBC or BBC on every Sunday. Um, I don't know if you remember it, it's probably before your time. <laughs> um, um, but it was Fern Cotton, Reggie Eight, a guy called Barney Harwood and myself. And we, um, I did that for a couple of years. And then when that came to an end, I was 16, 17 probably. And my mum was like, well, you're gonna have to get a job like everyone else that's left school. Yeah. And, which is right. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I thought. And you know, it all stops, doesn't it? The money, it all, when it stops, it stops. Mm. And that's where it sort of taught me a lesson because it's all very easy come, easy mm -hmm. go. It's hit, like you don't ever think you're not going to be asked again. And I think I'm pleased I learned that as, at a young age. Yeah. Because, in, you know, my older self is like, okay, my attitude for everything is, well, it's not going to last forever. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be relevant forever. I'm not going to be, you know, because... I really felt that. So I then took a promotional job, which was for my local radio station. I would stand outside Tesco. I would, they had like a brand, it was called Time FM, shout out Time FM. <laughs> and I would drive around in their branded car because I'd passed my driving test at that point and like give out leaflets and like, we would like win this car and you know. Yeah. I mean, and that is like, let me tell you, if ever I walk past a shop and someone's handing out a leaflet, I will never in my life, Marv laughs at me. I'd stop, i talk to them. I maybe don't give my number. I give like an email address that, you know, yeah. that I don't mind giving. And because I just, it is the most soul destroying yep, thing I've in heard. the world. When you're like, hi, I just wanted to, and you're so enthusiastic and they go, no. Yeah, and then you're walking past, and yeah. it's almost like you've let a stink bomb off next to right. me. Right. Um, so yeah, that was and that was character building. Um, so then I did that. I was doing that for you know to basically fund my life and my castings. So I would do that, get on the train, go into town, go for an audition, mm -hmm. and it was basically that week to week. Go out with my friends on a Saturday, go, get up, go for an audition, on, and that's sort of how that works. As long as my my biggest tool that I want my children to have is I want them to have the most empathy and I want to mm -hmm. show them the world so I want them to know where you're living and the life you have is incredibly privileged mm -hmm. and you know that's across the board however and I want them to you know be have a real view of that and mm -hmm. understand and be sympathetic and empathetic to everybody's situation that's really important for me but I also want them to know that like in moments in life, cause we all have that where we're peaking and we're at highs, they do come with lows and mm -hmm, that's life. Of course. But it's how I want them to be the same person mm -hmm. as in like have the same morals and the same beliefs and s treat those seriously when mm -hmm. they're at the peak and also when they're, I you know, agree, when yeah. they're not. Yeah. Because I always, I remember someone saying to me years ago in like, when I just first started in this industry, it's so important to, you know, treat everybody the same. And it, and that would be my advice for everyone. And that's at like at a level of respect, whether it's the woman on reception when you're walking mm -hmm. into the meeting with the CEO, whether that's the researcher at the TV show, because one day they'll be the editor. And, and I think for me, I mean, that's a life thing. Like I treat you the same as mm -hmm. my friend, as, as you know, person mm -hmm. that we'd run into on the street to, you know, I just think that's a tool that I want my kids to have 100%. knowing that that's mm. how to live life. You know, mm. you're now more important or equally less important mm -hmm. than somebody else. No, I completely agree. 
And from this point, how did the Saturdays come about? So I was running loads of auditions, meeting different managers, just trying to find my way really. Mm -hmm. And then I got a phone call from a guy that was um, sort of looking to manage me at the time we were working together for a period of time. And um, he was like, I've heard about this audition. You might not want to do it, but mm. it's for a girl band um, with Polydor and with Universal. And that's where we were when we were in Escob Junior. Mm. So I was like, no way. Okay. And you should go. Why not? I know the woman that's doing the casting mm-hmm. and she, you know, there's loads of girls going, but why not? Mm-hmm. So I was going to go. And then literally I went out and I had the worst food poisoning. It was on like a Sunday or something. And I woke up with like the world's what, like I was like vomiting all through the night. And I was like, I'm gonna have to just leave this casting. Like the thought of, my mum was like, I think you should go. If you can get yourself up, get in the shower, see how you feel. But I think you should go. I got a feeling about this one. I was like, what? She was like, I'll drop you to the station. She was doing all that. Why don't you just go? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, felt marginally better. And then I literally on the way thinking, why have I done this? I feel so ill. Why have I listened to my mum? Anyway, got there. And it just went really well. Yeah. Like instantly I felt a vibe. There were so many great women in the room from like up and down the country. I met Una in the queue. Literally we were together the whole time and she'd come over from Ireland. And we met in the queue on the first day, like swapped MySpace. Yeah. <laughs> swapped MySpace accounts and like stayed in contact. And she was like, I've been asked to come back for another day of you. I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I have. As she was like, I'm going to have to fly back over from Ireland again. And I was like, you can stay at mine if you want. My mum won't mind. So she literally stayed in my mum's house. We had like, I had like the box room. I put her on like a single bed on the floor, like a little put me up thing. And weird, instantly we sort of gravitated mm. to each other. And yeah, then it happened from there. And then that was it. And how did you find that journey kind of going back into, I guess, the, the limelight? Different. Yeah. And that's what made me realise we were so well protected Mm -hmm. because we had like chaperones and like, I feel like I didn't see the real scope of the industry. Like, remember, we would only have be able to work so many hours. Mm -hmm. So I'd be like, right, we're off home. And and so then when we fast forward to years later, going in as an adult, I'm like, oh, Oh, this is different. Awfully long, aren't they? (laughs) Gosh, where's the chaperone at? (laughs) I'm ready for my bed now. Um, So that was very different. Um... I think the industry was different. Like Mm -hmm. it wasn't so much about that. We would go to Woolworths on a Saturday Mm -hmm. and do signings and like that sort of didn't exist any. There were just things. And then obviously slowly over time, it would be like, you didn't necessarily buy a physical CD anymore. It was like a, you know, you'd go on iTunes or whatever. And then fast forward to streaming. And Mm. so it looked a lot different. YouTube was big. So in some ways, it was great mm. that it was a little different. And then in some ways, not so much. Mm. Like certain things. I think social media wasn't a thing. Mm. Um, I can't remember, tabloids were still a big thing though. Tabloids were still a thing. The only thing that was weird, we were sort of part of that culture where we would go out on a night out and paparazzi would try and make you look as worse as they... Right, you know, it was very it was, much the era of like... It was that era. Yeah. So that was like the body shaming area. Mm. They're like... Michelle like in one of the magazines like enjoys her holiday and you don't know you're getting pat and it was that yeah, yeah, yeah. era of sort of tearing women down in from that angle and I remember like we would get out of taxis and they'd be waiting to get that up the crutch shot and like that was awful that was yeah, that nice. is horrendous. yeah but we got so used to it, right? Yeah. Which was all which when I think it wasn't about, questioned it wasn't questioned and we just that was part of it you yeah. want to be in this you know, you want to live this lifestyle and you want to be in the public eye. Yeah, like this it means you're it relevant with. and like all of this. And, and that's just what they do. Yeah. Wear trousers then, you and know, I, and that, and I'm like, and looking back now, I'm like, huh. we didn't <laughs> fight enough, but we were so young and we yeah, sort of yeah. was always in fear that, okay, well, we'll bring a new girl in. Yeah, the yeah. That sort of, you know, that was the sort of feeling. Um, like when I first dated Mar- started dating Marvin, I would, he would get out of the car first. We spoke about that the other day. We were like, he would get out of the car, walk around so that he could stand in front of me so I could get out of the car before 
anybody could get a shot That's like really it, wild. but that would never happen now which is no. amazing well there's a law in place so it yeah, doesn't yeah. Now, which is amazing but yeah it's kind of it it was a different era altogether and how did you find that how did you find being kind of thrown back into the public eye in a very kind of like women were talked about in a very i mean still are to mm. some extent but mm. like it was so blatant back then mm. i think weirdly we expected it and not that it's right but weirdly we'd be like oh gosh i'm scared to do this go to this place because i'm scared of what the, the headline will be or or what angle the picture would be coming from or so weirdly we kind of knew that it was part and parcel of mm. it but yeah so I think I really sort of felt it when I'd had a layer and so that is nearly 10 years ago so I'd be pregnant over 10 years ago and I just remember really feeling like oh my gosh terrified to go back to work and be surrounded by four other gorgeous, slim, not flabby, saggy, boobed women, you know? And and I remember just feeling really like, I have to get back, I have to get back, I Mm. have to be back in the outfit. Mm. And that necessarily wasn't so much from pressure from outside, it was what I thought I had to be. Mm. Actually, it wasn't really anybody else but me, Mm. but I was like, I was 23 when I had her, right? Mm. So I'm like, and I remember we had a single out about four or five weeks later. Fuck. And I remember being like, I'll be back. Did you talk to back. them about the fact that you were going to be just having given birth when a single was coming out? Well, we sort of... Because I know that would the have been... There yeah, was like yeah, windows yeah. for singles. It's like, we'll have yeah. one this time of year, this time of year, this time of year. And that was pretty much already decided like mm. a year or two out. Then I get mm. pregnant. And weirdly, I felt like I'd got pregnant you know the way you feel when you turn up to work on a hangover mm. and you don't really want to go on about it because no one's got sympathy, right? If, you're, right, sure. if you've got a hangover, you did it, you went out, you had a drink. Like you basically try so hard, don't you? At work yeah. Because you're like, no, no, I'm fine. I've got this. And yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, you got a sore head today. Like it, I felt in my first pregnancy like that. And why do you think that For was? For nine months plus. And then even to get back because I felt like I was letting the side down. Mm. I can't explain it. And I'm not sure if it's what I put on myself or if it was also, I think it's probably 50-50 yeah, probably to be honest. Yeah. Um, but it was like, well, we've got a single coming mm. out. And I was lead vocal on the time. Yeah, it was, it was a song called Gentleman or I had quite a bit to sing on it mm. at the time. Um, and I remember thinking, well, I've got to be back. Mm. I look like shit. I shouldn't have gone back. Like, <laughs> my God. <laughs> like, ser- and I remember like going on, we had a performance on like Lorraine mm. and I put spanks on and they were like, probably like a roll neck. They were up so high. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember thinking my boobs are leaking. Why am I here? I can't imagine that. But it was weeks after having a baby. It was all in hindsight. Yeah. So it was just like, it's fine. Yeah. But that was me too. Right, it's fine, I've sure. got this. No, 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 no. Yeah, I said yeah. I'll be back for the single. I'm back for the single. Yeah, yeah, It's fine, yeah. we've got this. Yeah. And that was like, when I look back, I just thought, what, I think like, why didn't anyone stop me? Mm. But I couldn't be stopped. Yes. Do you know what I mean? No, I do like, get Because Marvin always, like when I say that, he doesn't like it when I say that. Because mm. he's like, well, I should have really said, babe, no. Mm. But when I mean, why didn't anyone stop me? I just mean, actually, ultimately, why didn't I stop myself? But also... No, but I also think there are protections that can very much be put in place, not in order to, for you to be like, you're literally not allowed, because, of course, you're allowed to do whatever you want. Yeah. But, like, the encouragement are you sure? of kind of being like, are you sure? And also, we've got this. This will not affect your contract. Yes. This will not affect your future. Like, almost like yes. going the extra mile for reassurance. Because mm. women, after having children, there is so much... I mean, the, it's even terrifying. the fact that, w- like people feel like it's relevant to know whether a woman is at childbearing age or like all of these things when hiring just goes to show how much we think that women aren't capable of doing the same job once they've had Mm -hmm. a child. Like the fact that we even need to know that is indicative of the fact that we think it changes things, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So even just needing to be overly accommodating just to be like, look, 
we like, and we know that we're probably not going to be able to stop you, but we just want to be really clear that, you that if you didn't do that, yeah. like if you didn't do it, you would be fine. Fu- nothing would change. Yeah. And I, there'll be another one in right, a few exactly. months or exactly. whatever. Exactly. Like it's not, it's yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. And I think I'll be honest, it is the most terrifying feeling actually having a baby because you're so full with love and mm. I a lot of Alaya's pregnancy and her early years are a bit of a blur to me like that first sort of year or two because mm. I was probably weirdly desperate to prove a point mm. as to that I didn't soak up anything mm. like sometimes I look back at pictures and I'm like I don't really remember that or yeah. gosh that's mad that that like it spills out of body mm. because I think and bearing in mind that like, I've been in that situation before where it all ends. So that's always in the back of my brain, I think, at that point. Mm. And I think you're so, I'm self-employed. So I'm like, there's no protection of any maternity mm. leave here. If I don't go back to into this, and that, I think that's what I was, that's my motive behind mm. it. Like once it's done, it's done. And now I've got a child to provide for. So it can't be done. Yeah. You know, and that was my, I think that was where the place that it was coming from. But it's so scary because you, I've gone from being in this hot girl band that, you know, our image is five hot women. We sing, we, you know, we're in sexy dances and performances and, right. you know, that's part of it. Mm. And when you don't feel so sexy when your tits are leaking and mm. you've got spanks on and you've yeah, had a yeah. cesarean and you've got a big gash across your tummy and your boobs aren't up where they started. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay, does this work now? Yeah. And why would people hire me now when mm. they can hire that person? Because that isn't, you know, the math weren't mathing. Mm. And I just, it's terrifying mm. that moment of thinking, okay, well, if this doesn't work, what do I do? And when you kind of, so at that age, obviously you were still super young, mm. like 23, that's- A baby. That is a baby. And look at my sisters, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I my sister's, I think, about to turn 23. And yeah. Oh my God. How t- how I'd be scary like, is absolutely that? not. Yeah, I know. I'd be, if they <laughs> like, came to me, I'd be like, no. You are a child. No way, you are a baby. And I think- I didn't feel I was a baby, but no. I think maybe because I'd done so much prior to of that, course. right? I started yeah, 10 years in this world career. at like 12. <laughs> yeah, it was so weird. Um, it didn't like, I felt fully ready for a baby, but I was just mm. really the work element and around, I hadn't prepared myself mm. for. And did you, was it a conscious decision to decide to have a baby? Mm. Yeah. Mm, mm. And so you were, you were, we were like, let's not, were... let's like, we just got married. Yeah. And we were like, well, let's sort of, not try to not to yeah yeah you know? right, sure. yeah um and then it did happen probably quicker than we thought right sure and you're like, like oh, oh. <laughs> oh that's you're like, well, that's, the science definitely works then. yeah oh my gosh okay wow that was we were right about how that i made. thought we could have a year of like right yeah lols <laughs> um so it was probably quicker than we thought but you know and obviously i took and at the time i took that for granted because in my you know, my age now, when some of my friends are mm. now thinking about a family at, you know, I'm 34, around mm. that age, I'm like, now feels like a good time. Goodness me, I did take that for granted because mm. I didn't realize that, you know, for some people, that's exactly what they would want of to course, happen. Like, let's course. just try now not to, boom, it happens. But for me, actually, it was terrifying. I'm it's, like, ah. It's such a fad that we spend our lives trying not to get pregnant and then like at the point that feels appropriate for like work and being able it's to like establish so yourself a bit and all of that it's like oh yeah it's so <laughs> Sorry. Rude. like it's outrageous but I feel like there's a weird we're conditioned so strangely when it comes to babies having babies whether we want babies whether mm. oh 100%. you know I think even when I was married mm. married I walked I didn't want to go and buy a pregnancy test because I felt ashamed mm. Because I had it attached to like, you're not supposed to get pregnant. You're not supposed yeah, to get pregnant. Yeah. You're not supposed to get pregnant. I mean, no, but we have this like, as in we literally have this sh- shame and being like, don't yeah. get pregnant. Don't get pregnant. Like, how? The, why? Why would you yeah. have sex? Like, yeah, that is outrageous. Like, why would you do that? So and terrible. then literally, like, we're like, oh, yeah. you left it too late. Yeah, I like know. that is. It literally like turns overnight. It's, it's the like weirdest oh, thing. And I remember thinking, gone. yeah, even if 
like, and I was married and I felt embarrassed. And people publicly knew I was married. Right, exactly. And but, it shouldn't fucking yeah, matter anyway. And if I but, wasn't married, but what I mean is, it's but like, yeah, yeah, I like, felt like I was doing this naughty yeah. teenage thing that I'd been told not to do. Like, it felt odd. And I'm like, why do we have this weird relationship with, like, you're allowed to enjoy sex as a woman. You're allowed, you know, mm. you're allowed to, whether that means a baby, oops, not for me right now, or yes, I'm excited, or... I don't want at all or you know you were allowed to sort of be mm. and I think and I, I really remember having this weird sort of like relationship with that like oh okay I need to now turn this into it's a something that I wanted <laughs> like, yeah you know, right like, change that sort of the way that it is in my brain and when you look back on that time is there anything that you would have changed in terms of work in terms of family in terms of any of those things I think I'd have changed the pressure that I felt I mm. was under, whether that was projected onto me or not, that's, you know, I can't even remember at the time, but I definitely know the amount I put on myself mm. to sort of try and rush back too soon. Sure. And I think to be present, like I think the worry in me of never working again overtook the fact that I was in a situation that I'm never gonna get that time back mm. again, i.e. enjoying the birth and the, early stages of a newborn. Mm. And then I, I almost felt guilty about that because mm. it was all about getting back to work. Mm. Well, it's and you lose She was way. with me, but she was with me at work. Yeah. And not that it changed, not it didn't change my love or anything like that, but it was about, okay, well, she'll be six months by then or she'll be, tw it was all about that rather yeah. than like taking it all in. Yeah. And that's what, that, if I could change anything, I wouldn't say it was an, you know, I don't believe in regrets, but if I could sort of go call myself up and be like, Rosh, it's all going to be all right. It'll all figure itself out. Take, just take some time at home. You're fine. You've got this. Mm -hmm. Enjoy this because she's going to be like 10 soon and yeah, you'll be sad. Yeah, you know it. Yeah. That's what I, you know, I wish that like the future me could call the old me. But it's like, it's a lose-lose either way, because if you go back, then you're a bad parent for, yeah. you know, going back. And if you don't go back, then you're a bad parent for not, you know. Yeah, we, I read this quote on and Instagram and it said something like, um, we expect women to raise children like they've not got a career and have a career like they've not got children. Like it's a really, you know, it's a really, it's a double-edged sword, isn't yeah. it? And I think ultimately, it, you know, we need to take pressure of ourselves, but also off of what always makes me sad is, is other women that have mm. opinions on well, the amount how of, and why you're doing yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, the amount of shaming online, I can't even like the, like every single time there's like something on a new mum who's doing something, I know. it's like, where's the baby? Where's the baby? Where's the baby? I it's hate like, that. has the father been uh, like, as a, I, has a man ever had an interview where they've been asked, where's your child right no, now? I say this constantly because obviously I really notice it, right? Mm. Because there's two of us. Right, of course. So we'll both go to an event and everyone will literally ask me, so who's got the kids tonight? And I said to mum, when you're like, uh, gig and you're there to DJ or whatever does someone anyone have ever come up to you and say who's got the kids well no because they assume I should have right well no do you know what I find so funny is when people like to the um to the like mum they'll be like oh is, has he got babysitting duties tonight it's daddy like, daycare it's like my worst it's not phrase babysitting He's being a parent, oh, no. like it's as in like honestly, parenting, not babysitting. But it is wild. He's doing when what looking I do. The and they're like, oh my god, how? Or they'll say, how amazing is he? I saw him the other day taking With the, the kids. kids to soft play. I'm like, are you going to congratulate me? It's in the a same fifty breath? fifty. <laughs> like as I did the day before, I didn't get a medal. I don't <laughs> and also, we made these children <laughs> yeah, fifty fifty. Know. Like it's crazy, and I think we'll be batting up that away for a very long oh, time 100%. as women. I think you know it's the more we talk about it and make people stop for a minute. It's like when I really hate it, like I have to really talk to like my aunt and my mum when they will we'll have a family gathering and they'll be like, well, isn't it your turn next? Aren't you? Surely you want kids now. To, uh, and I'm like to like my sisters or to my cousins and I'm like, you, you, you like can't, and they don't mean it from a bad yeah, place. Yeah. They just assume that that's what every woman wants i'm like mm. first of all you don't know if they want kids mm. so don't assume that 
that what, every woman wants kids. Mm. Well, no, they don't. I mean, they they might don't. not be able to have kids. Exactly. They that. might not. And like... then, so then, and then, secondly, you could be really, you could be making them feel they could be dying inside right now mm. because you don't know what their journey is and mm. you don't know what you know. And I sort of had to have this education piece with like my elders. And they're like, right? Do you know what? I didn't think of that. And then when when you start sort of planting the seed, they're like, yeah, actually. My daughter's having a hard time conceiving. Mm. Like, right. So you just have to, yeah. you can't. Let's stop. Let's stop this weird pressure. Right. And and when you were at the beginning of your parenting journey, and obviously you were both in the public eye, and I assume both kind of breadwinning for the, mm. you know, for the family, mm. but also wanting to balance all of that um, with work and parenting and everything. How did you find that initial split? And how has that kind of evolved in terms of you both you, you know, your kind of split of parenting. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a, a real like unique situation mm-hmm. in, when I compare it to my childhood and I feel very proud and, you know, very grateful that we are so 50-50. Mm-hmm. Like it couldn't be more 50-50 if we tried. Um, and I think it's important. Mm-hmm. Like for us, it's how we work and how we manage we sit down at the end of the week and we go right next week because that's the way to not overwhelm Mm -hmm. each other yeah so we'll be like right next week obviously the kids have school Monday to Friday so that's that but we go okay I'm on pick up this day you on pick up this day and that and we sit down and that's how we do it and sometimes it'll be me all week Mm. sometimes it'll be him all week sometimes it will be split 50 50 but it is what it is Mm. and I think with us in terms of like career we kind of know that we we both give each other breathing space to mm-hmm. shine. So if he's like, me and the boys are going to go on tour again this year, I'm like, okay, I'll try and protect that period of time mm-hmm. for me and that's your thing. Mm. And then, we, you know, that's just how we do it mm. and vice versa. Because you can't both shine at once in mm. that way in terms of like from a career perspective because at the end of the day we have a family and that doesn't stop for anybody so it's Mm. how you know how do we prioritize each other and the kids and everything else in it and listen it's not easy yeah and the balance we're still trying to strike but that's how we do it if we're like this is really important to me and we understand each other's level Mm. of importance and we respect that and it very rarely collides um and that's sort of our motive. No, you, oh my God, you have to do that. Okay, fine. I won't do this then. I might do this earlier now. Mm. So you need to be around for this, you know, and that's mm. just how we do it. Yeah. And did that take a lot of trial and error? Yeah. Three kids in, babe. I'm mm. like, yeah, I'm you just, were like, <laughs> I've just got there. <laughs> um, but yeah, now we feel like I trust myself now as a parent, mm. as a wife, as a mm. businesswoman, there's something for me about entering my 30s that mm. like a little light bulb went ding and I was like, I know what I'm doing. I'm yeah. going to start telling people no, that doesn't suit mm. me. I know now what, you know, I know what my boundaries are and I'm not, it might, it might not happen that way for everybody, but there was something really empowering about like entering my 30s. I was like, I know who I am and mm. I know where I'm supposed to be and like, I had this new lease of life. I yeah, don't know, it's wild. Yeah, no, new I wrinkles, can... new lease of life. <laughs> <laughs> <You're absolutely laughs> right. um, and when it comes to being a mum, I guess in the public eye, mm. as much as we wouldn't want it to be any different from being a dad in the public eye, so, yeah. but that it is, is not girl, the case. It is. Um, how have you found that in terms of like social media? Because I cannot imagine anything. More terrifying. I take it all with a pinch of salt. Mm-hmm. I feel quite lucky with the community that I've got on social mm. media where they're quite like me in mm. that sense. And they're quite, they're really supportive. And I share the kids. I don't sh- overly share the kids. Mm-hmm. That's not like my whole feed. Mm. And that's also quite conscious because mm. I know what that comes with. Mm-hmm. Because everybody else seems to think they know how to parent your child better than you, yeah. which is wild to me. Mm-hmm. Um I think there's a lot of double standards and I could post, and we've done this before, exactly the same picture as Marvin, before we knew how to, you know, you'll get one nice picture of us and yeah, the kids yeah. cause, you know, and, and a thousand terrible ones where someone's yeah. crying or someone's hit each other or 
we've got our eyes shut and we'll post the same one. This is before you could do the collab posts, right? Now I'm yeah. like, we just hit it on both of yeah, our yeah, things yeah. at the same time. Um, and the comments that I would get versus the comments he would get are crazy. Really? Mm. Like, I'm sure he's being rewarded. The difference. Oh, he'll be, and my mine will be like, like, why have you not got a coat on your son? He needs the, and then you go and Marv and Marv will be like, wow, Blake's t-shirt is so nice. <laughs> or like, you know, like this it is just for like an example. Yeah, out. an example, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like the difference in the, and I'm like, it's actually crazy. And I know that a lot of our followers also are the same. Mm. So I know that we obviously share a lot of the same audience over the years that we've been together. Mm. It's crazy and it will always boggle the mind. Mm. But I think it's just a, it's just a sort of echo of society, isn't it? That I think it will still be a man's world in terms of family and parenting and, you know, as you get to a certain age, it will be like that for a long time, unless there's people like us that are like shouting about it mm. and, you know, being a feminist in that way. But I think it just, it's boring. Mm. It's actually boring. It's like, oh. Do you call it out? Yeah. Cause I know- If it happens there's... to me in the flesh. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Social media, just kind of, yeah. I kind of just feel like you're giving something light. I, I get that, but then I also feel like we're always, always, always told like, just don't give don't give airtime, all of this. Mm. I also feel like there's a point where it's kind of like, do you know what? Sometimes you, I feel like a lot of the reason why it men exists. get less of kind of that as well is because they're kind of like, it's obviously not fucking true. And then you kind of just move yeah. on. Whereas it's like, yeah. as in like, we're quite, a lot of the time quite graceful about it and kind of like, you know, patting yeah. off. And I feel like some, like, there are some people I follow who call things out and it's not necessarily on this, but it will just be like generally calling anything out, being like, read the fucking room. This is not the time, like yeah. whatever. And yeah, kind of, and I think does... obviously it depends what it is. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. And I also think, but my attitude has always been anyone that's going to come with that mentality, I treat as kids. Mm -hmm. So if my kid was acting up about something, you know, and you're like, I'm just going to ignore you for a minute until you've, realized down, yeah, yeah. yeah because then what happens is normally then they come back with an apology sorry yeah. i didn't think you'd see this yeah no i know so so it, it, it is almost the same energy really mm. but i think yeah i'm up for i just think sometimes i don't care enough mm. either yeah. about somebody that's got an opinion that doesn't know me that's gonna form this whole mm. story from one picture that i'm mm. doing a terrible job mm. so you know when you're kind of like yeah I'm prob we're probably never going to relate to each other because I don't understand how you would do that to another woman. So we're probably... The same thing that I was talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah, it's a respect At thing. peace with the like, yeah. we're not aligned. Yeah, let's not try yeah, and let's make not it try like. and make this a thing. Well, I feel like this has been... I've absolutely loved this chat. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. Thank I you. feel like um, it's been like a good... I feel like I've had like a proper like natter. You know, I when know. you have like an have had a proper little, little like... mother's meeting, haven't we? You know, when they used to say that, <laughs> yeah. didn't they? Is, yeah, a proper yeah. little natter. It's been so nice. Oh, well, thank you so much for thank coming you. on and sharing your story um, and being so open and everything. Thank I really, really appreciate much. it. Thank you we all lead busy lives and I will be the first person to say that some things like sorting out my finances easily slips to the bottom of my to-do list. That is until I found Revolut, which is a financial super app for all things money. I am a big believer that when saving for the more aspirational things in life, like going on holiday or even buying your first home becomes so much easier when you get on top of your everyday spending. Why not make the most of intuitive technology that takes all of the hassle out of budgeting for you and also helps you spend and save smarter? You can join the 28 million people worldwide who've downloaded the Revolut app for free. So I think you know what to do. Download Revolut for free and sign up to your account now. Thanks guys. Yeah. <laughs>